Hi folks, welcome to a two-part series on 4th Axis Cam in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So the task at hand on today's video is how do we get this adaptive toolpath contained to the correct area and a truly fourth axis toolpath where it's wrapping to the curvature of that part. Let's explain the problem. If I go and create a new 2D adaptive, pick a tool, and under geometry, the first thing you need to do starting a fourth axis toolpath, and there's no reason that you would know this, but you have to, is you first have to choose a wrap toolpath. So wrap cylinder, I'm gonna pick here, and, and now we're all set. We're now able to pick the pocket selections. But the problem is that I can't pick the correct area because you have to pick a contained toolpath to do a fourth axis 2D adaptive. What I mean by that is I wish I could pick this and this because that's kind of what I want inside of there, but it's just not going to work. Back in the good old three axis world, this would have worked. If I create a 2D adaptive for this pocket, 2D adaptive, click one line, click the other line, that's what we call an open selection. There's two separate chains. That's actually the correct way to do it because it links or leads in and out of the part, which is different than if we actually picked a closed toolpath here, like that, where it's actually going to stay inside of this and thus it wouldn't actually machine what you want. So how do we get this toolpath? Switch from cam to patch. So what is patch? Take a look folks, this is awesome and it's really easy. Do not be intimidated. Patch allows us to create geometry that has zero thickness. So like this model is a real object. It is supposed to, if it existed in the real world, have material and weight and thickness. Patch are these sort of zero thickness skins or layers. So what we're gonna do is create a patch around this shape that's going to let us be able to change this area and to control what we want without having to actually go in and hack our model or create two versions of the actual solid model. The one thing that's confusing about patch is you wouldn't go to create new patch, but rather you go to offset. So again, create, offset. Why offset? It's the easiest way, and I think the only way, for in this case, to create a patch that is exactly that shape. We do so by doing zero as the offset. So click OK. If you expand your body section, I've been practicing here, uh, so you see I've got some other bodies, but the main body, body one, is the solid model. If I turn that off, I'm left with body 12. That's the patch that I just created by doing that zero offset. So the idea here is this has no measurable thickness. It's just a skin, if that makes sense. So it's pretty close to what we want. The last thing we've got to do is modify this patch so that we've got a closed bar right here. I'm gonna turn off patch body 12, that patch, turn back on my body. Again, I'm gonna to go to create, Offset, and here's a little trick. I want to offset this front face, and I want to offset it right back to this point. You wouldn't know it, but instead of typing a value, I can actually click on that point, and it updates the value. Now, it's not parametric. As in other words, if you change this distance in your CAD model, this isn't going to update, but for here, we're okay. We've got the patch being created at the correct offset. Again, I'll hide my solid model body. So now I've got this patch, in that patch. Now I've got to do modify split face. What are the faces that I want to split? I want to split this. And what's the tool? What am I doing the splitting with? It's that disc I just created. Click OK. And now I turn off body 13. You can see it's left this, but I've now got this thing I can select. Let's hop back into cam. Now I'm gonna be really thorough here for this tutorial. I'm gonna turn off with the light bulbs the two patched bodies. I'm gonna turn back on the solid model. I'm 
new 2D adaptive. I'll pick my tool, 1 8 inch end mill. Now, really important under geometry, we first need to check wrap tool path, and I need to pick that cylinder. Now we go back up to pocket selections. And I'm going to turn off my body. I'm going to turn on, I think it's body 12 was the one that we split. Yep. So now you take a look. When you hover your mouse over, it gives us the correct enclosed selection. Perfect. Click OK. Oops, I forgot. In this case, sorry, we've got to use a smaller tool. It's a really small feature. I'll pick that other smaller tool. Click OK. Awesome. So we've got our toolpath. It's contained. One thing we need to change, which is that right now, that toolpath assumes it can't extend out to the right or left because we fully contained it. So let's hop back to patch. This is really easy. Turn off our body. Turn on body 12. I would like to get rid of that. So let's just click it and hit delete. It should work. Yep, that worked. And let's take this patch, go to Modify, Extend. And now what I can do is to click both those edges, and I'll just say point 0.2, that's too much, point 0.1. Click OK. Go back into Cam. Update that toolpath. Perfect. It now extends beyond in both directions. You can control that accordingly. One last improvement. Let's say this end was already machined away. Instead of doing the red helical ramp in, which is quite slow, right click, edit, linking tab, change your ramp type from helix to plunge, click OK. It now plunges down. It's actually cool to watch you see it to build the toolpath out of place and then puts it in place. Now plunges down and moves through our part. If we wanted to do this around the, let's see how many are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right click, add to new pattern. Circular pattern, axis, we can click on any of the round uh, lines, circles there, and it'll be eight of them. And we are done. So there you have it, folks. If you're interested in more, stick around. Next week, we're going to dive in a little deeper including a tutorial on how to get your fourth axis to do something seems quite simple, which is to walk around, kind of like a hybrid mill turn, if you will, both on this end tip area as well as the larger areas back here. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.